Nui, a beautiful uplifted coral atoll in the central Pacific, honeycombed with limestone caves. It's where the sea snakes come ashore to lay their eggs. A speck of land in the migratory path of the great humpback whales. They come here to carve and mate. This is Nui, an island in a sea of snakes and whales. Nui lies 4,000 kilometres east of Australia. It's affectionately known as the Rock of Polynesia. It's the mere tip of a massive underwater mountain, a labyrinth of caves and tunnels, an exciting place to dive and explore. Kim Sheridan and I join Ian Gray of Nui Dive. Our destination is a unique place called Snake Gully. It's just a short boat ride along the base of the 30 metre high cliffs. Now, Kim has never met a sea snake before, and Snake Gully is the place to overcome any fears of meeting such a venomous creature. This is the best way to get rid of those fears. The snakes have surfaced for air and are now returning down into Snake Gully. Sea snakes are not known to gather in big numbers, except for here at Snake Gully, where they sometimes aggregate in the hundreds. This one is searching for an unoccupied hole in the coral. They're all taken. No worry, just squeeze in. Scientists remain puzzled by these unique gatherings. Perhaps it's simply to hold on in the current while having a sleep. Sometimes the gully becomes too crowded. This one will seek out a private place of its own. They're powerful swimmers because of their paddle-shaped tail. The locals call this sea snake Katuali. It's a member of a special family of sea crates that live both in the water and on land. They are the most isolated of the 70 species of sea snakes, unique only to Nui. They are the pacifists of the Pacific, preferring to snooze than snack. They do possess a venom more toxic than the cobra and could kill a human with a single bite but refused to do so. The Katawali is a lung breather, and after 30 minutes of resting, it rises for a fresh breath. Midway, the traffic is heavy, going up, coming down.
Sea snakes are excellent divers. They possess a tubular lung running nearly two thirds along their body. They take multiple breaths to restore their oxygen for the next dive. Now this ribbon eel has survived all its life in Snake Gully and it knows too well not to trust an approaching snake. Ian leads me along the gully to the cliff face and into a secret cave. A pair of linefish guard the entrance. His torch reveals a gourmet delight. A dozen painted crayfish. The crayfish are protected, so I come up empty-handed. Snake Gully is certainly a special place. This snake is the common Asia-Pacific banded sea crate. You can see it's longer and thinner and very distinct black and white bands and almost a bluish tinge to the white bands. And uh, the Nawayan one is much thicker and the bands have a uh, slight V to them. Wow! 100 metres offshore is a great humpback whale. I'm here in the month of July. It's the time when these ocean giants travel north from Antarctica and arrive at Nui to carve and mate. Ian takes us to them. Fishermen show off a wahoo they caught at a fish attracting device made from palm fronds. We hover and wait for the whales to reappear. My niece Tanya Crop joins Kim and I. The whale gives us a surprise. Oh, that was beautiful, beautiful. Okay, here, here it comes. Wow, look at that, you can see the white straight through. Ian, what is that? Is it like a slick across the water? It's great for seeing uh, where the whale went down. And it gives that an oily appearance, but it's just the, the water being flattened. Beautiful. See the tail? Just going to take you up where the footprint is, Kim, and then we'll put you in and drag you from there. OK, no worries. OK, Kim, in you go. The plan is for Kim to spot where the whales are hovering in the depths below. There, it's underneath us now, and it's either very deep or it's very small. 30 metres down, two great whales do indeed look small. OK, Tanya, in your hop. It's a pregnant female with a male escort. Tanya and Kim simply wait on the surface for the whales to come up. Twenty minutes later, they rise for a fresh breath.
Nui is one of the few places where interaction is allowed with the whales, but under strict rules and supervision by the dive master, so as not to harass them. This freedom gives us the most wonderful experience. another group of excited divers. They're just lying on the bottom underneath us. The pair appear to be lying on the sand, 30 metres down in the clear water. We wait. This is going to be the world record of breath holding. This pair are wonderfully cooperative. And after each 30 minute rest, they rise to greet us over and over again. intimidated by our closeness. Why should they? We feel so puny face to face with the giants, especially when they approach us. We freeze and let the whales choose their own path past us. pass quickly in what has been the most memorable event and we finally give up as the sun goes down. Just over here this is a pahi and Captain Cook tried to land here, tried to land three times on the island and was repelled each time by the natives. Consequently, called the island Savage Island, and uh, but uh, as it turns out, it's one of the friendliest places you could come to. Tamafe is the island's traditional canoe builder and a keen fisherman. Our relationship with the sea snake is very, very important because um, at one point during the season or during the year, they're floating on top of the water. Hundreds of them are just floating around in uh, particular areas, and for us traditional fishermen, it's a sign of fish. In fact, they're like partnership, like a husband and a wife. The katuali, or the sea snake, what it does is it attracts the little bait fish out of the holes, 
people of Black Trevally to eat. And it's a sign for us then, fishermen, to target these species of fish. So yeah, it's an Im important relationship between fishermen and uh, sea snake. Sometimes we talk to the Katoeli when we see them. We ask them such things as, uh, you know, uh, bring some fish around, you know, encourage the fish to come and eat our baits. You know, that kind of thing. So, yeah, whether it works or not, uh, sometimes it does. But, uh, yeah, we do talk to the species. The Polynesian settlers arrived a thousand years ago, by canoe, of course. And these scenic caves are garages for their craft. Another warrior also migrated to this bountiful island. The coconut crab, cloaked in armour, rules the forest floor and dines on fallen nuts. A much smaller land crab can also be dinner. The formidable warrior has ripped this hermit crab right out of its shell. The coconut crab still retains a link with the sea. It must release its eggs in the ocean, and the larvae soon turn into little crabs that crawl back on shore. This night so bold does have one predator, and only because it's good eating. Tangia leads Tanya into the dark forest to check the baits he has set out to catch the crabs. All depend on the moon. If the moon come up too early, we're not good to come here every night. So we had to wait for the moon. You have to wait for the moon? Yeah. Why is that? Uh, it's too, too light for the, the crab to come out. So what about spiders and pigs? I mean, yeah, is... spiders are uh, there oh, every, everywhere you walk in. Oh. Spiders are dead. Are they are they deadly? Because uh, this is no. really creepy out here. They, they're not Gosh. deadly. There's one woman there already sitting, just about to run away. Where? Because he hear the noise. So I better oh. grab it fast before he run away. Now I just grab it like that. Make sure all the legs, I grab all the small legs oh. and pull it down. Bring it up. Is he big enough to eat? Uh, yes, for the family. Uh, well, only one person can eat this. Go inside. Okay. And shake it in one corner, because it's still more to catch. And give it a big shake, so he will go to sleep straight away. That's going to make him go to sleep? Yes, it will make him go to sleep. Knock him out? Yes. <laughs> uh, not really, it just make him go to sleep, so it make it small. Okay. So more space for um, further down the track. More crab. Yes. This time we come past first coconut. We don't have any in there, so uh, we just go past the next coconut. Oh my! It's eating the coconut. So wow! We got another tin at night. Oh wow! Ooh. It's a very big one too. It's huge. Yummy. It's no. no. <laughs> it, it won't release it now. He doesn't want no. to. Do I have to break my jumper? Don't go and take your finger off. I don't want him on me. No, <laughs> 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 don't. <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah. Tangia obviously had a very successful hunt. The feast is for a new church opening at Makafu village. <laughs> Church dignitaries have flown in from New Zealand, 
and most of the 1,700 people of Niue are here today, all dressed in their finest and ready to party. It's a new age tradition at a feast to give gifts of money to all the performers. Some of the kids do quite well. generosity continues. These are gifts of taro and tuna and pigs to take home. Basket weaving is another quality tradition that is handed down. Ahi Cross is the expert. Way there is plaiting weave, so there's a different way of, of weaving. Like you're making a mat, that's plaiting weave or a basket. But I combine the plaiting weave and the stitching weave on that one. It's a gift to the Governor General's wife, oh, so it was quite good. Know. Yeah, Premier came, saw it, said, I'll give you a thousand dollars for that. I said, Deal, and it's the same size as that. On Saturday night, all the workers at the Matabay Resort and their children perform a traditional dance for the visitors.
Tony Hawk, 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 Tony Because Nui is an uplifted coral reef, this rock of Polynesia is all coral. And the fossil remnants of a once living and submerged coral reef are visible everywhere. The coral makeup of the island and the surging Pacific Ocean has created a rugged coastline of soaring archways, deep chasms, cool caves, fascinating rock pools, and intimate swimming coves. There are no rivers on Nui, no runoff. Its waters are crystal clear. The entire island is honeycombed with limestone caves. Up till the mid-1800s, most of the islanders lived in them. Why build a hut when nature provides four walls and a solid roof with a nice view? The most impressive Talava cave system is reached by a pleasant 25-minute walk through the rainforest, an opportunity for Kim and Tanya to appreciate the forest flora and glimpse some of the wildlife. Their goal is to view the spectacular arch, and it's only reached by passing through an amazing cave. Wow, this is good. Beautiful. It's a huge cave, Kim, isn't it? It's a haunting cathedral cavern of ancient stalactites and stalagmites. Is 
The Katawali sea cray can do one thing no other sea snakes can do. Leave the water for dry land in order to lay their eggs. They are remarkable climbers. The large belly scales allowing them to push against the rock surface and slither forward. Kim, this is snake. Oh, no. Do you want to, do you want to follow it? Well, not really, but let's, let's do it. No, let's follow it. She's laying a clutch of three eggs. All other sea snakes bear live young in the water. Because she's evolved to crawl up on land, she's quite agile. There they are. They're the eggs. Wow, look at them. Oh my gosh. Aren't they huge? Where's the snake though? Oh, let's hope she's not around. Mm. I want to have a look. That's pretty yeah, cool. I don't want to stay too long though. All right, well, quick. Let me take a photo. Quickly, let's get out of here. Yep. I reckon she'd be pretty close by. Now, when you go for a swim at Nui, you swim with snakes. The girls have found a lovely rock pool where they feel they will not have to share it with the snakes. Wrong choice. A snake is searching the cave wall in order to crawl out and lay her eggs. I didn't think of that. Should, I think we better get out of here. Come on. She has a long way to go across the reef flat to reach the sea. The uh, sea snakes here on Niue are very harmful. Yeah, I don't mind, you know, I'm not scared of them. The local people are also used to them. They're everywhere, actually. They're, they're seen mainly out in the deep ocean and you know, when when the tide is in, they tend to come in and where our swimming spots are. So, yeah. But they're harmful, you know, we're used to them. They're... Even the locals are used to them. Manasofe and Vesi collect shellfish when the tide is out. It's a traditional way of life where they cross paths with the Katawali. This is the Bubu, and this is what you call. Um, Matapihu in New England, but I don't know the, the term for the shells in English. So this is what we normally um, get when we go down the sea, looking for shells for families and, and whatever our meal we're going to have during the day. Every time we go um, collecting shells, we can always see a snake swimming around us. It can come right up to the reef to where you're doing, collecting your shells. Uh, some of the time we used to talk to the snake. You know, thank you for coming, look after us and see you. And sometimes they just look at us and swim away. 
Legends of sea snakes and their mythical powers are deeply embedded in Nuan legend. They say the snakes are messengers from the sea gods. When they emerge in special places, it's a warning to the people, beware. To ignore the warning from these snakes will cause the gods to retaliate. The Katawali has evolved into the most isolated sea snake in the world, unique only to Nui. Fortunately, it's a placid creature, for its powerful venom will paralyze the muscles and kill the victim rapidly. With no limbs to hold its prey, the venom is crucial to its survival. The islanders honor the legends of their sacred creature. And amazingly, the Katawali has never bitten anyone, yet. A priceless patch of tropical forest is preserved in the island's centre. It has always been a major source of wildlife and traditional foods. The girls join Misa, who explains how the forest provides their traditional ways of survival. Those dry pieces of hibiscus are very good for starting a fire, it's always available. But you have to know which is a good part of this hibiscus tree for starting a fire. So you can transfer this The general method everybody uses over here for catching the unga when they are hungry, living over here, is where they will get even up to over 100 dry coconut like this and cut a small hole, about that gap, on the side of the nut and make two strings on the husk by pulling it out like that. So you can hook it on a small tree like this or a small ledge of coral, then what you do is you have to turn the nut around. So when the unga comes from where it lived in places like this, it won't drag the nut to where it comes from. So it'll have to stay here and get a feed for maybe two or three hours. Gives you enough time to check the hundreds of baits you put out in your family land and collect them as they were eating. The canoe is constructed out of two types of tree. The hull out of the mahogany type tree. The top is made out of that tree because the wood is light, not as light as hibiscus. The good thing is if it got wet by salt water and rainwater, the water doesn't go into the wood to make the canoe heavy. So the canoe remains light all the time. Before Christianity, our ancestors don't have these, don't use these. What they use is half a clamshell. This is only a small one. I should have a bigger size. So to us, this is a knife, edge, X scraper. I can make a food preparation bowl out of a tree trunk with this in a small fire. Make a nice bowl, bake my new bread out of taro, ripe banana, yam, sweet potato, using coconut, water for moisturing, flesh for flavor. Please don't get drunk. Uh, so I just squeeze the lime in here? Yeah. 
Can you, can oh. you hold it? Sorry. Yeah. Oh, that's magic. Yum. Bush tucker. Nui tucker. Yes. The coconut tree has always been a staple diet of the Nuaeans. When the first Polynesians came ashore, they called out Nuae, which means behold the coconuts. There are a few colonial buildings still standing. In its island quaintness, if you want a beer, go to the ice cream shop, buy your veggies at the pub, lemons at the butcher's shop, and football boots at the internet cafe. A good thirst quencher is the coconut stop. Oh, wow. Cute signs remind us to do the right thing. Nui lies in the path of tropical storms. In January 2004, the Category 5 cyclone Heta made a direct hit with devastating destruction. It was, uh, it was amazing the power of the cyclone. I think everyone was expecting a lot of wind damage, but no one expected the seas to rise 40 metres above their normal level. Our house was 30 metres up on a cliff with the dive shop. The wave just came straight through, taking everything with it. And even a brand new gear shed that had only been built a year before, we got back the next day and even the cement foundation wasn't there. Imagine the horror of a 30-metre storm surge with 10-metre waves on top of that engulfing all the buildings on the cliff top. Cyclone Heta destroyed all the corals on the western side where it hit. But just around the corner is a beautiful coral garden that is as pretty as you can get. As we run toward our next dive site, a pod of spinner dolphins pop up to greet us. sea snake braves the surge against the cliff face to dive and enter a remarkable underwater cavern in calls the Bubble Cave. This hidden cave provides a perfect nursery, a good place for the female to climb out and lay her eggs above the wash of the tide. A resident white-tipped reef shark grows fat on the cave's bounty. Visiting sea snakes are on its diet. This anemone has never seen the light of day, nor the squirrel fish that scurry in the dark crevasses.
the Katawali searches for a ledge to climb out among the pillars of stalagmites that the rising tide has submerged. The bubble cave opens up like an ancient cathedral. Mother snake does not protect its young. The safety of this cave is all they will have. 90% of hatchlings will be eaten in their first year, and their first test will be to make it past this shark. The pair of friendly humpback whales are still here. We know the female is close to calving, and we eagerly await the anticipated arrival of her newborn. In Pacific islands such as Nui, these whales are revered as ancestors, their family. I'm excited at this moment because I thought she was going to carve right in front of my camera. No such luck. Three days later, we were having lunch at the Mata Bay Resort when, surprise, she brought her newborn calf close in to show off. You can see it through the water, just down there. This is what we've been waiting for. Three days old, and the baby is as big as a small car. The male escort is here too, a complete family. Underwater cave that links to a secret cavern above. It's where the juvenile coconut crabs choose to come because it's totally safe from their predators. The Katawali also choose to come here to lay their eggs. Two worlds will soon meet in this hidden cave. Will they collide? 
For the hungry crabs, the female katoali is an added bonus. The katoali cannot use its deadly venom against this armoured adversary. 